the ultra rare Breda 8.8 .8 with a torque arm and coilovers. You can't find these things just anywhere. All right, as you can see by the mess here, I kind of got busy building this torque arm. I never took any video of it. But I think it will be nice and solid. I did some welding to the nodular iron here too. Um, I didn't like, like this here, looks kind of funny. It's almost like a slag on the top. So I ground, this kind of looked the same, ground the top of it and it looks fine, no cracking or anything. Just wasn't loving like that slaggy kind of look that's on there. <clears throat> but I've got three 3 8 bolts and a 3 quarter inch bolt that are also helping hold everything in place. I got the coilover brackets trimmed here for this three and a quarter axle tube. And now I just got to weld them on. And this rear end will be ready to go under a Beretta. All right, I'm happy with that. I'm going to burn it in. Fresh welds. This is the pannard bar mount. Here we are in all its messy glory. The rare Chevy Beretta 8.8. .8. Torque arm and coilovers cleaned up and ready enough for paint. Okay, through the diff in, torqued it up to 80 foot-pounds, got some new axle seals, now axles will go in, pin, cover. Okay, filled up with fluid. I almost forgot to RTV this bolt. So what I ended up doing was RTVing around the bolt, sticking the bolt in there, RTVing the nut that you can no longer see now. Can we see it down in there? Yeah, there's the nut. RTV the piss out of that thing on both sides, let it dry overnight. Two quarts of fluid in the limited slip here, and we can keep moving. Motorsport Tech adapters torqued down and ready to go. That fill plug I welded in fits like perfect. I'm happy with that. Test fit the slicks on here. Plenty of room. All right, this is a big moment here. So the fab work on the axle itself is officially all done. Um, on the coilovers, I've got these mounts. I'm gonna build a bar that goes from side to side and then uh, weld that into the car. I took a whole bunch of measurements and stuff and these should fit. I'll be really pissed if they don't. <laughs> and for the torque arm itself, I've got a bar here. I have to figure out when I get my trans cross member in place where that's gonna put everything. Cut this to length, take another bar, connect it to the front of here. And this piece of rod that I have here, I'm going to plunge in whatever the length ends up being. The bar that comes up from here, you know, I'm going to cut it, weld it to this piece, and make sure that this, this bar goes well past the point that this turns into one. So this is solid one inch steel. This is going to have a uh, sway bar bushing one inch sway bar bushing to allow this to to plunge and to rotate freely and That sway bar bushing is going to go on the bottom side like this to the trans cross member because all the all the torque from the axle uh, When it adds power is going to try and lift this up and lift this whole axle So that should be a nice strong way to do it. That's cheap and easy this bracket here is the same one I welded on the axle right there. This is going to go on the car itself. This will be the other end of the pannard bar mount. And these are the lower control arm mounts. I think they got to be 15 and 3 quarter, but I got to double check my measurement on that. Um, and these are adjustable on the car, so the right hand and left hand thread, so I can get the alignment just perfect. And actually, all of this stuff has that same adjustability built in, so that I can get my axle location placement perfect. I can get my pinion angle placement perfect, all that stuff. Uh, and like the adjustability here, I've got a ton of adjustability on the bracket itself and also on the coilover. So I should be able to dial it in. I'm doing all this fab work ahead of time won't be a nightmare when it goes to the car, hopefully. <laughs> all right, here are the adjustable control arms finished up. Let me put this on my knee here. Okay, we're getting longer. Right, we're getting shorter so I can get alignment just perfect even if my welding ain't so I picked up another 2005 NV3500 
This will be a cheap insurance policy because they're not real strong. Got this one for 200 bucks. At some point, I may end up doing one of those Tremec TKXs. Uh, it's the new five speed that replaces like the TKO 600. Um, they're about the same size, but they're supposed to shift better at high RPM. And I do plan on spinning this thing to like 8,000. Um, so that's probably going to be the long term plan. Two NV 3500s will work for now, at least to keep me going for a while. Because uh, it would be pretty annoying if I got that thing going rear wheel drive <laughs> and grenaded the trans and couldn't drive it. So this way uh, I can at least blow up the transmission once, have an easy replacement, and then uh, probably do that TKX from there. All the main ingredients are ready, so let's go put them in a Beretta.